Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today as we continue an important series of studies on Christ and the law. I know that you'll be blessed. I want to welcome our Hope Sabbath School team. It's good to be together again, isn't it? It is. Amen. What an interesting study and how Jesus condenses the study of the law down to life-changing principles. Today we're going to study about the important topic of Christ, the law, and the covenants. Mm. But before we do, I want to welcome our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. We're always delighted to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Here are just a few of the many emails that we receive. Bessie writes from Maryland in the United States of America and says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for a year now, and I've seen nothing but blessings. Amen. Amen. This week's lesson, I felt the Holy Spirit with you, and I also felt the Spirit too. Mm. I'm praying that God will use each and every one of you to bring souls closer to His kingdom. Amen. Well, thanks Amen. for writing to us, Bessie, from the United States. Here's a note from Jeffrey in Zambia. Jeffrey says, I was inspired with the Hope Sabbath School presentations. Greetings to all Hope Sabbath School members in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, you can say hi to him if you want. <laughs> Keep the flame of faith burning until the glorious clouds unfold mm. with the majesty of the King of the universe. Amen. Amen. That's quite a picture. Stay blessed and hold on to Jesus. Well, Jeffrey, thanks for writing to us from Zambia. And not far away to the west in the country of Namibia. Humphrey writes, says, thank you very much for your amazing work. You are working very hard. May God shower his blessings upon you. You are blessing people here in Namibia hmm. and all over the world. Well, thanks so much for writing to us, Humphrey from Namibia. That's a country I visited just a few years ago and we'll pray God will bless you to be a witness for him. We're still on the continent of Africa, but we're continuing to move to the north and west, and we've made it now to Angola. Mm. Mm. And Jose writes to us from Angola and says, It is with great joy that I am writing to you to say that you cannot imagine what Hope Sabbath School is doing in my life. Mm. Praise Amen. God. <laughs> Amen. Well, we can't imagine because we've got many letters of miracles, <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Hope Sabbath School team for helping me to understand the Bible. You are an inspiration. May God bless you. Mm. Well, thanks Amen. for writing to us from Angola. Jose, it's great to hear from you. One last note from Pony Tico. We'd like to guess where Pony is from. He's from the islands of Fiji. Mm. Wow. But he's a doctoral student in Australia. Wow. He says, I'm uh, pursuing my doctoral studies in New South Wales, Australia, and I have been using your YouTube presentations to help with my weekly study of the Bible. Amen. 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 High tech. <laughs> I recently returned from Fiji doing my data gathering for three months, and I have been a blessing to the local Sabbath schools there in Fiji. So he's been sharing what he's learning on Hope Sabbath School mm. with the Bible study groups in Fiji. When I bumped into your website, that's hope channel, what is it, hopetv.org slash hopess, right? When I bumped into your website, I was amazed at the in-depth study of the Word of God. I could assure you that your website is a candlelight that leads anyone who's willing to hear praise the Word God. of God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, praise God for that. Well, you know, we have... Hope Sabbath School members, I know of at least 130 countries around the world, but we'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at hopetv.org, website slash hopess, or email sshope at hopetv.org. We'd love to hear from you. You can also visit our Facebook page. I think we have about 45,000 people following us on Facebook, and if you click like, we all smile. Because <laughs> we're happy to know you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Amen. But right now, we're going to sing a scripture song. You can download it from our website, Sheet Music too. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. You shall love the Lord your God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul and with all your mind, this is the first. 
first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I really appreciate learning that song. Hmm. If someone asks, well, what does Jesus really say about the law? That's this whole series, Christ and the Law. We can say, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, with all your mind, this is the first and great, great commandment, commandment, right? And the second is like, like, it. like it. You shall love, love your neighbor, neighbor as, as yourself. I love the way that Jesus is able to take profound truth and make it so simple, Amen. so life-changing. And we want to pray as we study the Word of God today uh, that He would open our minds to a life-changing word from Him. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you for each Hope Sabbath School member around the world that we can be part of a community that seeks to know you and to love you with all of our hearts. Yes, and to know how you want us to live and to love those around us as Jesus does. So guide us in our study today. May lives be changed by the power of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We're studying about Christ, the law, and the covenants today. And I'd like us to begin in the book of beginnings. That's the book of Genesis, chapter 9. We find a first mention of a, a promise. Mm -hmm. And Gloria, maybe you could begin our study today in Genesis, chapter 9, verses 12 through 17. And uh, let's see what the Word of God says. Okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Genesis, chapter 9, verses 12 to 17. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between you and between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. 16. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Amen. All right, so the covenant sign is what? A rainbow. A rainbow. A rainbow. Oh. Now keep, keep that in mind as you go to Genesis 17. And let's look at another covenant sign. And would you read that for us, Jamie? Sure. In Genesis 17, beginning with verse 1 down through verse 12. I will be reading from the New International Version. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell da face downward, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God 
and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant that you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your house or brought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. So what's the difference between these two covenants? What, what are some differences you notice immediately? One is, one is the natural sign, the other one is more of a fleshly and bodily um, kind of um, sign, basically. One okay. deals with nature, while the other one just is... Can we at least person. say they are different signs? They are. Yes. Okay. What's, one of the signs is a, a rainbow. rainbow, and the other one is... Circumcision. Okay, so the different signs. What else, Gary? What do you notice? One is for the whole world, every living creature, and the other is specifically for Abraham and his children, his generation. So we've got one which is global mm -hmm. and, and one is, which is more uh, regional or specific to Abraham and his descendants. What do these covenants have in common? Uh, Gloria, you had something well, you'd like yes, to Yes, I was about to say something, the difference between the two. So for the second one, Abraham had to do something on the eighth mm -hmm. day, we circumcised. Okay. For the first one, the rainbow was just a covenant that God was just a extending grace or extending. So they clearly are right. different, right? right? Yes. Different yes. symbols. One, you're saying, Noah didn't have to do anything for right. the sign, but Abraham did. Uh, one is global, as Gary pointed out. The other one is for Abraham and his descendants. But what, what do they have in common? What, what, uh, what, do, you, what do you hear? Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. God is making a promise. So God's involved making a promise and? Man. Man. And people are involved, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whether, whether a, a, a group of people that is dis one man and his descendants or the whole earth. Right? Let's look at a few covenants in the scripture. We'll notice that some are local and limited, and some of them are global and eternal. We'll also see that some are conditional. So we're learning a little about covenants. Jasmine, would you um, read for us in Genesis 31? Sure. And uh, we'll see something about the covenant here, 43 to 54. All right. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine. But what can I do this day to these my daughters, or to their children whom they have born? Now therefore, come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there on the heap. Laban called it Jigar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore, its name was called Galid. Also Mizpah, because he said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take other wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, see God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, here is this heap, and here is this pillar, which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father, Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they ate bread and stayed all night on the mountain. Now, if you're familiar with the context of this story, Jacob and his uncle Laban had some disagreements, didn't they? Yes, they did. Uh, what was the disagreement, Joel? Um, I think it has to do with the marriage. It did. Yeah. It did. Uh, Jacob fell in love with the younger daughter, and her name was Rachel. Rachel. Rachel but after he gets done with the wedding, she must have been wearing a very thick veil <laughs> because what does he find out? That it wasn't Rachel. Yeah. It, it was actually her older sister, yeah. Leah. That must have been a very big surprise. Uh, but, and, and he's 
noticeably upset with Laban, works another seven years, but that wasn't the only point of conflict, was it? Mm -hmm. what, what else is a conflict, Gary? Laban would see that Jacob was prospering. Mm -hmm. I mean, any time he gave him a certain amount of cattle, those cattle multiplied and they were his. So he kept on changing his wages like 15 <laughs> times or something. <laughs> yeah. through the course of it's interesting working. because he is also blessed because Jacob's there, yeah. but he's having a problem that Jacob seems to be blessed in a remarkable way. So there's the contention, and uh, how does this erupt into a conflict that requires this covenant? Do you know? Yes. I think ja Jacob kind of decided to, you know, leave behind Laban, and they kind of left the whole thing, and I think the story, you know, told us that Rachel took some of the idols of her father. Yeah. And I think that was the reason why Laban followed them. And that's where they have all this covenant thing, I believe. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. later she gets rid of those idols, but yeah. you're right. The agreement is there's conflict between the families, and Laban and Jacob are saying, let's make, what's another word for a covenant? Agreement? An agreement. Yeah. yeah, an agreement. Let's make an agreement that we won't cross between, uh, past this heap to harm each other. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how many people does this covenant relate to? Is it, is it global? No. It's no, it's not global. global. It's, 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 it's actually global. between two people yeah. and their yeah. families. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And saying, we're going to get along, we're not going to fight with each other at all. We're going to, not going to harm each other. And, and the sign of that covenant was? God is the A heap. A heap. A heap. Yeah. That's what Galid means. Yeah. Uh, heap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, if you want to go back and see that heap, we made a... Covenant. We made a covenant. We made an agreement together. So there's an example of something local and limited, but certainly meaningful. All right? Look in Genesis 22 and verse 18. We're looking at covenants here as we're going to talk about Christ, the law, and the covenants. And we'll read that. Samiso, do you have that? Would read it for us in Genesis 22 and verse 18? Sure. I'm reading from the King James Version. Verse 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now that's referring back to Genesis. So let's go back there first, Stephanie. Maybe you could read that for us in Genesis 3, in your seed. And then the covenant there that you just read to me, so who is the Lord speaking to? Speaking to Abraham. But it's not just the covenant with Abraham, is it? No. It's the whole world. Global. Through your seed, right, everyone, the nations of the earth, the nations of the earth. How does it read in Genesis three? This is referring back to the seed of Abraham that will bring blessing to the whole world. Just verse fifteen. If you read verses fifteen through twenty-eight, this narrative there. All right, verse fifteen from the King James Version, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Can you imagine how Adam and Eve felt as they were leaving that garden home, 
They'd had a perfect mm -hmm. environment. Now they're banned from it. But they have one promise to hold on to. What's the promise? That um, somebody will come to save them. Someone's yes. going to come. Mm -hmm. Back to Genesis about the seed, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That, that a, a deliverance will come. Now, they're not going to see that in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. But they can hold on to it. If we go okay. forward to the New Testament, to the book of Galatians, chapter 3, we will see as the Apostle Paul tells us that that promise is fulfilled. In Galatians chapter 3, also beginning with verse 15, we see the promise of the seed that is to come. And Joel, I wonder if you'd read that for us. Sure. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it reads, Galatians 3, 15 to 28, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet... If it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or added thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God and Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, disannul that it should be made, that should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scriptures hath concluded all under sin, that the promises by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as has have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And would you read verse 29 as well to close the chapter? And if, and if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. So this covenant that was made, first to Abraham repeating that promise in the Garden of Eden, is to be fulfilled for all who do what? Believe. believe. All who believe, all who accept that promise, which brings us to the understanding that covenants are conditional. Yes. Uh, it, it's not something that will automatically happen. Mm -hmm. it, it can happen if we abide by the covenant, mm -hmm. but it can be lost if we don't. Look in Genesis 17 and verse 14, and we'll notice a condition of the covenant. And Jasmine, would you read that for us, Genesis 17 sure. and verse 14? Reading from the New King James Version. And the uncircumcised male child, who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people, he has broken my covenant. So in the covenant made with Abraham, the sign was? Circumcision. Circumcision. And if you don't follow that sign, there's a? A break of the covenant. Yeah, a, a breaking of the covenant. That's right. Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning with verse 10. Perhaps, Jennifer, you could read that for us. Uh, speaking about the covenant that the Lord is making with the children of Israel, beginning with verse 10 of Deuteronomy 8. And I'm reading from the New International Version. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And down through verse 20. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day, Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase, all you have is multiplied. 
Then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with venomous serp snakes and scorpions. He brought you out of the hard rock. He brought water out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So the covenant is made, but it's conditional. Yes. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1 verse 7, I think we'll find Moses there reminding Joshua <coughs> of this covenant. Gloria? Do you have that? Would read it for us? Joshua chapter 1. Here's a, a young leader. Hmm. I don't know how young he was at that time. They'd already been wandering for 40 years, so he was probably ready to retire in our <laughs> culture. But young compared to Moses, Moses who was 120 right. years old. Right. What was the counsel that Joshua received? Joshua 1 7. So I'm reading from the New King James Version. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Hmm. Amen. So there's a promise, a blessing. Now, we may break the covenant. How do we break a covenant with God? Hmm. Being How do we break it? We don't follow obedient. By being disobedient to the... Yeah. We don't follow through. We don't follow through on the agreement. Yeah. Yeah. But what assurance do we have that God is always faithful to his end of the agreement? Hmm. What assurance do we have that God is faithful to his promises? Are there any texts that come to your mind? Stephanie, one comes to your mind that uh, maybe it's one you've memorized. How do we know God will be faithful? Say, well, what if I do what God asks? How do I know he'll keep his promise to me? What would you say? I think of Joshua 1.5. Okay. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. I, I love the, same, the first chapter. That's the same uh, count, counsel yes. coming from Moses. How does that read in your Bible? From the King James Version, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee in all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So what, what um, evidence does the Lord give to this young leader, Joshua, that he will be faithful to his promises? The same way he was with Moses? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's exactly, way. Ulrich. Mm -hmm. He's saying, look at my faithfulness to Moses. Moses. Mm -hmm. and that can give you assurance that I'll also be faithful to my yeah. promises yes. to you. Yes. Samisa? He says, I'm God and I change it not. Yes. 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 So the character of God and the actions of God in, in the past, give us assurance that he'll be faithful to his promises. Joe? I have one in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. All right, give us a chance to find that. Sure. This is a, one that uh, assures us that the Lord will be faithful to yes. all of his promises. Yes. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. Amen. And the reason why I, you know, I brought this up, we were talking about the rainbow. You know, for the rainbow to appear in the clouds, you need sunshine and you need rain. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's two parts. And for God to show this rainbow, spiritually speaking, you needed two things. His mercy and you needed... Uh, to see his justice and what he did in the past. So he's reminding us that he's a faithful God and he's not going to leave his promises and he's not going to forget you who is faithful to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Powerful and important to know. I saw another hand raised. Gary, does something come to your mind? Oh, uh, assurance that he keeps his promises? Yeah. Um, this is in Second Peter 3, verse 9. Second mm -hmm. Peter yeah. Chapter 3. So you're taking us to the New Testament. By yeah. the way, how do people know how to find these Bible texts? 
<laughs> right up. By studying, the Bible. <laughs> By studying. studying the Bible, right? Second Peter 3, 3 verse 9, and, and this verse... is the King James Version. Um, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, mm -hmm. as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but all that but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, talk about love and mercy. He's willing to let us keep on trying, you know, give us a second chance, give us a third chance. He wants us to be with him, and he wants us to reap the benefit of the promise that he gives. Amen. He's willing to give us the time to do that. So, so the issue is not whether he'll be faithful to his promises, but what? Whether we will, we will. Whether we'll even accept mm -hmm. his covenant offering to us, right? Yeah. Say, I'm waiting for you. I'm extending to you grace and mercy and salvation. I'm just waiting to know if you'll come and accept that. That's right. And I will be faithful to my promises. Jamie? I just wanted to add to that is recently a friend told me in another Bible study that the entire Bible is full of second chance stories. So, you know, every single one of us is a second chance story and that just shows his patience and his love for us. Hmm. It surely does. Jasmine? You know, there's another verse. It's in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. And Which is actually quoting from, from Joshua, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, right. Would you read it? Well, let, let us find it first. Hebrews. Sure, sure. Hebrews chapter 13, and verses 5 and 6. Why is it important for us, uh, Jasmine's going to read this in a minute, why is it important for us to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is faithful to his promises? Mm. Why is that important? Stephanie? If, he, if we didn't believe he was faithful, we wouldn't trust him. Yes. Yeah. 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 Through the storm. We're, we're staking our Faith. eternal future yeah. Yeah. Exactly. On, on the faithfulness of God. Yeah. So uh, here's another promise. Actually, the book of Hebrews, the author is quoting from the Old Testament. Right, right. How does it read in your Bible? So in the New King James Version, it says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Amen. And I like that because it shows that he's not just reflecting that, you know, God is going to be faithful, but remembering that he is our helper. He's there with us. So it's yeah. an encouragement as well. Yeah. I have to smile. The Lord is my helper. I don't know who your helper is. <laughs> Jennifer. I was just going to say, when it comes to keeping promises and covenants and agreements, I think it boils down to character and capacity. Mm. You have to have the character to follow through with what you say you're going mm. to do, but then you also have to have the ability to do it. And I think what we see in the Bible is that God has both. Mm. Mm. Amen. I got to make sure I got that because that was character and capacity. capacity. Yes. Right. So I, I can have a good character and promise something, but if I don't have the capacity to follow through. Mm. Yeah. But God has both. Sumiso. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Well, we're really, we've opened up a lot of promises here. That's great. And Seth, I saw your hand raised too. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. And verse 8. All right. And what translation are you reading from? This is the King James Version. It says, The grass withereth, the flowers fadeth, but the word of God will stand forever. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, indeed. Wow. Yes. So, uh, grass withers, flowers fade. Mm. His word is consistent. His word Ever stands Amen. forever. Amen. Seth. This one especially testifies of the mercy of God, and it's, it's uh, found in the first epistle of John. Okay. Uh, chapter 1, verse 9. First John. You're, we're talking about how we can know that God will be faithful to his promises. Mm. And you're reading from 1 John 1 and verse 9? Yes. Uh, I'm reading from the New King James Version. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm. Mm. Amen. And that's very beautiful, especially when we realize that we will often fall and we can come back to God and he'll be there to, to forgive us and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you know, just pick us up. And, and I suppose the evidence right. that he is faithful to that is the new life that we've all experienced when we've Amen. claimed that promise, right? Yes. Because mm -hmm. yes. Yes, yes. if yes. you knew all the things I'd done, you'd wonder I'm why I'm smiling, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I would just add the further evidence 
are all of these people in the Bible? I mean, if you look at the Old Testament, it's just grace upon grace upon grace. There mm -hmm. are no people in the Old Testament who did not need forgiveness and grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Puya. Uh, I think the best evidence that we can find in the Bible where God kept kept his promise is Jesus himself mm. because throughout the Old Testament we find God promising all over again and again to his prophets that he will bring the Messiah and he did Amen. and I think God kept his promise Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes. quite well you know one of the things I really appreciate quite well one of the things I really appreciate about Puyo is when he says good things he always smiles <laughs> <laughs> because it, he did God kept his promise, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. And I'm, yeah. our discussion is really uh, lively, but I'm going to move us to yeah. Hebrews chapter 9 because yeah. there is a new covenant. Hmm. We know what a covenant is now. A covenant is a what? Agreement. It's agreement. an agreement, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it may have a sign attached to it. It may be local or it could be global. Mm -hmm. But here we now speak about a covenant. Gary, perhaps you could read for us starting in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. This word covenant can be translated will or testament. Mm -hmm. It's the same word in the Greek. So you may have some different words in your translation, but it's the same covenant agreement that we're talking about. Okay. So Hebrews chapter 9, beginning with verse 15. Okay, and I'm reading from the King James Version. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength, and all while the tester liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was de dedicated without blood, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of the calves and of the goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God had enjoined upon you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and, also, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Hmm. So here's my question for you. I think, uh, did I want you to read down through verse uh, 28? Oh. So if you could okay. keep reading, because there's something very important in these next verses. Okay. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are all the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second mm. time without mm. sin unto salvation. And that's really good news, isn't it? Amen. So in this covenant that God is making, which I think your Bible called a new Testament. Testament. Does anyone mm -hmm. have the translation covenant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A new, new covenant? covenant. Mm -hmm. um, what is the sign of this? It's not a rainbow, mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. It's not circumcision. Mm -hmm. What is the sign of this new covenant? This is blood. What is it, Jasmine? Blood. The blood. blood. It is? The blood of blood. 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 Yeah. Jesus. That Christ died for our sins. As, as Puya said, he, he kept his promise. Yes, yes. he did. That this, through the seed. Mm -hmm. deliverance would come. And, and it's not just any blood, right? Mm -hmm. It's the death of Jesus to deal with the sin problem, right? Amen. He's made a covenant with us. Now, how do we accept that covenant? Mm -hmm. Remember, covenant's always between two or more people, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how do we accept that covenant? When he's saying, I'm offering this solution for dealing with the sin problem. How do we accept that, Gary? I mean, if we just go back to... I mean, one of the well, most well-known texts, John 
-hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it's a belief in what God has done. And I mean, let me, let me push you with that because I think you're right on track. And right. thank you for reading a verse that maybe some people who are joining us have never heard before. Right? So right. thank you, John 3, 16. But I want to go beyond the belief because the covenant mm -hmm. is, is more than just believing about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you yeah. unfold that some more? I mean, that word belief is just packed because I like to say be living. Oh, him. Mm -hmm. not just believe. Yeah, yes. because if you have that belief, if it's inside you, it has to come out of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and how does it come out? And how you act. And be yes. before you act towards other people, yeah. let's talk about what it will do in terms of how I relate to God. What am I going to do? Hmm. Help love me. Love him. Love I'm love going him. to what? Love no, God. No, love no, him. no, no. Put him first. Oh, no, no. I'm going to accept, I'm going to accept the covenant yeah. offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Accept yeah. the yes. person yeah. who's dying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like God so loved the world that he gave. Will you? Accept. Will you accept that? Will you enter into that new covenant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to change the way I live, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. In, in fact, we're going to discover in the last section of our study that there are some wonderful benefits. Mm -hmm. but, but thank you for letting me press you beyond kind of a belief as an intellectual right. ascent. Yes. Because I think that the devils believe the demons believe yes. and yes. they tremble, the Bible mm -hmm. says, mm -hmm. because they, they've not accepted the covenant. Mm -hmm. They've not accepted that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and offers us, as Gary read, the, the gift of eternal life. Okay. So let's take a look. Uh, Gloria, maybe you could read. We're talking about some of the benefits. If we right. accept this covenant relationship and the sign of it is what Christ has done for us, isn't right. it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 through 7. Right, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding richness of his grace and his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. So let me ask you a question. What's one of the benefits or what benefits do you see in that text Mercy of entering into that covenant relationship? Mercy and grace. Jamie, what do you see? Mercy and grace, um, forgiveness and the ability to, you know, have the love of God written on our hearts and as an extension of our character. All right. Use some of the language of the text. We are what? Raised up. Raised up. We were dead if you read earlier in the chapter. Exactly. <laughs> but we're not only raised to life. What's a, what else happens to us? What's another oh, benefit? Can. What did it say? In heavenly realm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jennifer is like, it'd be one thing just to be raised to life here. Yeah. But I'm, I'm what? Heavenly realms. Yeah. Heaven. In heaven. Yeah. With Jesus. What does that mean in heavenly realms? What, what do you think that means? Because we're still here on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. right. So what, what's, what's Paul trying to say? Anybody? God's Spirit basically dwelling in us. We, we have the Spirit of God with us as part of this uh, new covenant where we have divine uh, power, so to speak, divine aid. His Spirit uh, is living in us? Spirit is living right. in us. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we should read the text again. Who, who read the text there? In, uh, okay. That was you, Gloria. Yeah. So maybe read it again uh, nice and loud. Let's listen. Ephesians chapter 2, 4 through 7. One of the benefits is raised to life, right? right. Mm -hmm. right. But let's, let's hear it again. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 47, the New King James Version says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together, in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding richness of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. I like the way you smiled while you read. <laughs> yeah, because he's not only made us alive, but he's given us an eternal what? Eternal life. Eternal. Mm -hmm. eternal. Yeah. Place. place. Eternal place. Mm -hmm. An eternal place with home. God. Ho home hope. or hope? Or both? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's both, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Jennifer. 
So here I see a spiritual resurrection that's taking place while we're here on the earth because Paul talked about us being dead in sin and mm -hmm. now we're raised to life. Mm -hmm. And then it's also forward looking to the time when we actually get to physically leave and go home to be with Jesus. Yes. Uh, I like that we were kind of working. It's, it's an eternal place, an eternal home, an eternal hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the answer is all of the above. Right. right? Yes. Yes. It's all of the above. Seth. Just to pick, on, uh, pick up on what Jennifer says. Uh, it, you know, we're able to partake of the divine nature right now. That's through the spirit of, of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that happens right now. We don't have to wait. Uh, but, of course, we're waiting for the ultimate fulfillment of everything. So he raised us up in Christ, and you're mm -hmm. saying that's not just saving us from the penalty of sin, which is death, right. but transforming everything now. Mm -hmm. yes. Our lives are different. Yeah, as well as an eternal hope. Right. Gloria. Yeah, I like to think that in verse 7, that says that um, he gives us exceeding grace. Mm. So when you partake in the covenant, you have enough grace, which you really need to get closer to him. Mm. And also, I like to think that um, when we are raised up to the heavenly places, the the uh, the gap or the space that sin brings between us and God it just like goes away and we are mm. closer to Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amazing. He, he does more than give us enough grace. He gives us exceeding grace. Grace, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he wants to give us an assurance. First John five eleven to thirteen. When we've entered into this covenant, and and by by what what have I done to enter into the covenant? I've Jasmine, what accepted. have I done? I've what? Accepted. When I enter into accepted. the covenant, I've accepted, accepted yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And this, the sign of his covenant is what Christ has done for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what wonderful assurance, Abigail, can I know? 1 John 5, 11 to 13. 1 John 5, 11 to 13. And I read from the New Living Translation. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. Mm. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have God's son does not have life. Mm. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If you see Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will, that, God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death. And I am not saying you should pray for those who commit it. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. Amen. We know that we are children of God, and mm -hmm. that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. Thank you so much. For, you just kept right on reading there. I was going to have you stop. But I think the Lord said, keep on reading, yeah. Abigail, because it, it talked about this new life in Christ. Yeah. But part of that benefit, back to 11 to 13, part of that benefit is what? We can Having have absolute what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal absolute life. Right. Con no, con confidence. confidence. That's right, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Absolute Confident. assurance that Confident. if we have entered into this new covenant with God mm -hmm. through Christ Jesus, we know that we have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, Gary. I'm just, I'm just thinking back to the beginning of the study, how it was a seed of promise. Mm -hmm. and that seed grew into a tree, a tree of life. Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus Christ. died on a tree mm -hmm. for our sins to give us that eternal life. So just like the, the, the imagery that God uses, it was a seed, then it was a tree, and his blood on that tree of sacrifice gives us eternal life. And th that mm. covenant is extended to how many people? Everyone. 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 Who you uh, I just want to comment on the new covenant that we're entering into. And I want to read from Hebrew chapter 8, verses 8 down to 12. Hebrews chapter 8? Yes, uh, Hebrew chapter 8, verses 8 from 8 down to 12. All right. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. uh, and it reads, Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, 
when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel mm -hmm. and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor or none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all, sh all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Amen. So in, in this verse, we, say, we see that, you know, God is telling us in, the new, in this new covenant, I will put my laws into their mind. So uh, when God put his laws into our hearts and our minds, love become the motive for obedience, mm -hmm. we yeah. will say. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. So Christ, it's not only what Christ has done for us, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's yes. the sign of the covenant, right? Yeah. Yeah. But also what Christ is going to do for in us. us. Yeah. And that takes us to Philippians yeah. 1, 6, which is one of my favorite uh, verses. And Ulrich, maybe you could read that for us. Philippians 1, 6. It's simple and yet profound. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. We're yeah. talking about the benefits of this covenant relationship. And the sign is what God has done for us in Christ Jesus and, and inviting us to accept that. Wonderful. Reading from the New King James Version. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. He who has begun a good work will do what? Complete, complete it. Complete it. Unto the day of Jesus Christ. What, what, what do you learn in that important text? What, what, what strikes you? Sumiso. He's taken responsibility, mm. and he's trustworthy. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, because a lot of people would think that we're supposed to be responsible for that happening. What is our responsibility? To accept, to accept. it. To, accept. Mm -hmm. to, to stay in that covenant relationship, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yes. a, that's a daily commitment, yeah. but you're yes. saying he's taking responsibility. Yeah. The one who began the work will be faithful to complete it. Anyone else? What do you hear? Jennifer? I like the fact that it says that he began it and he'll complete <laughs> it. It's so clear that it is the work of the Holy Spirit that leads us to repentance. And it's the work of Jesus that brings us salvation. It's so beautiful. We just have to accept it. He, he, the answer to all of the questions of who saves us from the penalty of death, who transforms us by his grace, who gives us a future hope and a home, the answer to all of those is Jesus. Is Jesus. Jesus. Look in John chapter 5 and verse 24. Two more promises of this new covenant relationship. And uh, Jamie, would you read for us John 5 verse 24? Sure. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. You know, some people are afraid of the judgment. And there is a judgment. Yeah, the Bible is very clear. There is a day that God has appointed to judge the world through his son. Mm. It will say in that mm. same chapter, through his son, Jesus. But those who have entered into that covenant relationship, have accepted what Jesus has done and wants to do, what does it say about them in terms of the judgment? They have, awesome. they they have passed over life. Life. Well, if you were going in, in before a, a judge and they said, before, let me just tell you, you've already passed over. Is that good news? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at one last verse in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. And Joel, I'm going to ask you if you'd read that for us. 2 Corinthians 4. There are so many life-changing, transforming blessings that come in the context of this new covenant relationship with God through Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So how has your covenant relationship with God through Jesus helped you. It says you're going to face trials, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said that too. How does that covenant relationship with God through Jesus 
help you to face the challenges and trials of life. Simisa. I think the most important thing, it's, it's like we already know the end of the story. <laughs> Saying he's studying something through us and he's going to finish it. Mm -hmm. So when we go through temporary trials, we know that we do not need to attach permanence to a temporary situation. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've read the end of the story. Yes. Someone yeah. else, how does it help you to face the challenges of life? Uh, this covenant relationship with God through Jesus. Yes. For me, it just reminds me that this world is not my home and, you know, there's there's a future waiting for me with God. Beautiful. Seth? The one who promises uh, is faithful and we know that Jesus has come into the world and died and been risen mm -hmm. uh, a, a long time and so we know that he lives for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it puts all of the trials and challenges of life into a totally new perspective, doesn't it? Because does. yeah. <laughs> yeah. we've read to the end of the story. Ulrich? It, it, God is amazing that you see throughout, even from, as we read from Genesis, is that he is looking for a relationship yes, with yes. humankind. Mm -hmm. And here, through Jesus, he is now uh, entering into a phase where he's trying to bring all of us back to himself. And he is willing to now write these laws in our hearts and form this new covenant with us mm -hmm. to bring us back to that relationship mm -hmm. with him. It's amazing, the mercies of God. You know, we've had a great study today, and I want to thank you for joining us. We, we need another hour. So will you join us for <laughs> the next part of the series on Christ and the law? But God wants to write his law in our hearts. He wants through this covenant relationship to change everything, not only to save us from the penalty of sin, which is death, but to transform our lives, to use us to be a blessing to those around us. What an amazing God we serve. And I want to invite you, if you've not accepted what God has done through his son Jesus to save you, to say, yes, I want to accept it. I want to enter into that covenant with God that will bring salvation and hope, not just now, but forever. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this inspiring study of the word today. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have accomplished for us. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for that covenant that you invite us to, not only to save us from the penalty of sin, but to save us from the power of sin and to give us a future and a hope. I thank you that you give us opportunity even today to accept that gracious covenant. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. We're on a journey discovering what it means to love God with all of your heart, love your neighbor, let God change you, and then use you to be a blessing to those around you.